You are now tuned into Coinman's official channel, and we welcome you to the big picture. Hello everyone and welcome to the big picture with Coinman. This is Sahib Singh, the host for this podcast, and today We'll be talking about a sector of the Indian economy which is certainly feeling the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic which is ongoing all across the world. In our past episodes we've spoken about sectors like manufacturing, travel and tourism etc and the impact of the pandemic on those respective sectors but today's agenda is focusing on real estate and real estate in India in particular. Diving into the details of this sector is my guest for today's episode Suman Sapra. Suman currently leads the tax and regulatory services at Coinman Consultants as a manager and her specialties include corporate tax matters and tax litigation and she's worked with her fair share of people in the real estate industry so that makes her inputs even more valuable to today's episode hi suman i welcome you to the podcast how are you doing today hello saheb i'm doing good how about you i'm doing very well suman so to kick things off i want to know what's your opinion and your thoughts on how big the impact of the pandemic is on the real estate sector right now it's inevitable that the market is in panic and recovery mode how do you think the sector is doing right now take us through well sahib the impact of the pandemic is being felt all across the world and the indian real estate sector is no exception to it this sector was already facing a lots of issues before the pandemic as well be it because of demonetization or implementation of rera compliances or being oversupplied under demand of their products in the market and honestly the pandemic had just made the situation worse Well, talking about the construction sites, malls, entertainment centers, literally everything has shut down operations, and developers have had to defer their new product launches for an unknown period of time. And Sahib, if we look at the statistics, initially real estate sector was expected to add almost thirteen percent to this country's GDP in two thousand nineteen, which is a significant rise compared to what it was in two thousand seventeen, which was six percent. But right now, that seems unlikely to happen. even supply chain has taken a big hit there's no money in the pockets of buyer for the small or the mid sized project and there's high possibility that number will fall even further now if we focus upon the foreign investment in the sector it has already declined by 7% from 2017 to 2019 and the numbers again look very unpredictable going forward but more significantly i feel the real estate sector does not need to be looked at as a whole rather we need to segregate it into different parts because of different challenges they are facing or will face we can look at three major segment these being commercial real estate retail real estate or the residential real estate it's only on evaluating these three separately we can actually get some perspective of what the total impact has been or will be so man it's interesting that you mention it since commercial real estate seems to be the hardest hit right now compared to the retail and residential segments or to the kind of large scale projects or office related spaces involved well sahib that's where i have a different opinion i feel that commercial sector will probably be the least impacted and i would like to elaborate on this see the office segments were growing at an impressive rate over the last 3 years but looking at another angle i do agree that there's a possibility that projects which were under construction may get delayed and the demand for the offices can drop going forward and that's probably because the foreign companies which leases the office spaces for their indian offices or subsidiaries are also recovering from the pandemic as well and interestingly the buyers who were looking earlier to buy office spaces are currently embracing work from home model and if they succeed in long term they might just change their plan and decide not to buy an office at all but as for working from home it's not an entirely rosy situation on that front as well there are and will be lots of problems when the employee is working from home for a longer period you could say small but noticeable things like internet connection speed sound quality issue lack of proper workstation lack of office equipment like scanner printers etc these are just few to name it and it's pretty common that quite lots of indian professionals live in a joint family and so finding a proper working environment can be difficult that's another major issue which one needs to consider but these are ultimately personal issues at the end of the day purely from a professional standpoint there's the issue of data confidentiality because lots of clients especially in our business don't want that you take their data home and work on it in isolation 
they want that you come to their office work on their data which is saved on their system use their resources and it's only then that they are actually assured honestly working from home has been kind of a luxury for business in the it sector only but even in that case a few days or maybe a, even a week of working from home is easy to deal with but using this as a permanent model would be very difficult yes it's a subjective matter since working from home will also depend on various aspects like the policies of different organization their nature of work the willingness of their employees and whether they are ready to come office or not and most importantly dealing with the issues of employee integrity but i think sooner or later office decorum would be required and people will have to resume life as usual and i do believe that things will get back to normal although it may take a little more time than expected and even the stats are in the agreement to some extent since the industry estimates only a 5 to 12% decrease in demand with regards to the commercial segment which i feel is not a big number so while cost cutting and the saving on office space is right now the good option but the significance of an office can't be ruled in the long run why your inputs on commercial real estate surely tell a different story compared to what is being talked about do you see the retail and residential sector following the same pattern well to be honest the situation is pretty bad for the residential segment since it was already dealing with the low demand and high supply even before the pandemic added to that there was always a pressure of delayed project deliveries too i was reading an analysis by a leading property consultant called anerock which said that the demand would actually go down by 35% across the seven major cities in the country for this sector and that surely doesn't look like good news well uh, needless to say be it be the global economic slowdown or the pandemic all these sectors are just adding up to the issues at hand even in the retail sector for that matter be it malls cinema halls and the restaurant which are completely shut down right now can expect low footfall even after the lockdown is over an example of this would be china where malls are still witnessing low footfall even after two and a half month post the lockdown and well the bigger issue is for those player who had just opened a new place before the pandemic hit or were going to launch new malls and now they have to defer their plans and would be incurring huge losses in revenue so it doesn't look like that these large entertainment centers or even restaurant will become fully operational after the lockdown and this would seriously raise question about this sector's growth in the short term at least so suman one key aspect which comes through the situation is the rental income of the malls how do you see things impacted in terms of re- rental income for these particular mall owners rental income is anyway under pressure since the malls are completely shut down and the tenants are not ready to pay the rent to the mall owners and since the majority income of the mall owners come from the rental income it's a life might feel right now even credit rating agencies have put a number of 40 to 45% of rated mall portfolios to be at risk so typically all multiplex operators and large anchor tenants have forced major clauses covering waivers of rentals during closure of operation but there are still debates going on whether covid-19 will be termed as a forced major event or not or in the absence of specific clause in the agreement can tenants avoid paying rent will be the burning question and can increase the litigation matters for all mall owners if we look at the tenants exclusively it's a stressful situation for them also ah uh, it just reminds me one of my client who is engaged in operating a mall was discussing the same issue and the company is finding difficult in getting rental income from their tenants and now they are worried if any word would evoke the force major clause and does not pay the rent at all for these months so in order to have a balance i could only suggest those mall owners to start discussing the possible scenario with those multiplexes cinema hall tenants or the retailers and start negotiating or working on turnaround measures and i think the same could be applied for the commercial tenants to have a win win situation or at least be optimistic about having one now while that is something the industry itself must do to recover but overall there are various factors which govern the progress of the real estate sector owe to the dynamism of the supply and demand in it so speaking purely from a supply point of view first of all what type of major challenges are companies or real estate players are facing right now now these could be more obvious ones like project delays or more nuanced challenges something which is not essentially caught by the eye well delay and reduction in construction activities would be the first and the most prominent challenge as it would be difficult to procure raw material because of a disruption in the supply chain even though production had gone down in china there will be an increase in the price of iron and steel product technical construction equipment which is heavily used in the construction activities and is actually being imported from china 
and this will eventually lead to an increase in the cost of construction as well so i feel the developer will perhaps be more focused on completing the existing project first but still the duration of project delays will not just depend on the lockdown in this case even after the lockdown gets lifted it will take time for developers to resume construction work in full swing and that's because most of the laborers have left for their hometown and there's no idea about their proper return which is becoming a huge issue so given the mass exodus of the migrant labor how severe do you think will be the impact on employment especially if we add this to the aspect of the shutdown of construction or project sites well practically real estate is big on generating employment numbers in india especially when it comes to construction activities now most of the workers engage in construction activities are immigrants and several labor who were trying to get back to their villages was forcefully quarantined at the state borders these laborers have the urge to get back to their villages immediately after the lockdown and we have recently seen various trains that have been dispatched carrying these laborers to their homes so even after the lockdown gets over and transportation resumes normally these workers may still prefer to do some job nearby or in their villages instead of running towards the metro cities which are heavily affected places by the pandemic given the huge demand in agriculture these days they might engage in that rather than going back to construction so as a result the construction activities would definitely take more time than expected to restart even in the most recent lockdown extension the government has allowed to start the construction activities but with the worker who are available and are on the site but there are anyway few in the number so all in all labor shortage can actually emerge as a major challenge for the sector after the lockdown as well and how do these labor issues translate into issues for the developers or the contractors of these projects and aside from labor absence what more challenges can these developers face well in the absence of sale it is expected that developer won't be able to sustain the employment levels that they need there can be salary cuts or reduction of some of the employees even apart from construction the malls the hotels etc are also the major source of employment and since these are closed down and will continue to remain so for a quite a while even maybe after the lockdown there can be cutbacks in the manpower to the tune of 10 to 20% Recently, Ima Properties, one of the biggest real estate players in the world, has announced salary cuts for their employees as all its projects were shut. That's because major leads revenues from malls and hotels got immensely hit. But on the other side, companies like DLF had announced to give salaries and daily wages till April 14th. So it purely depend upon the decision of the organization and which factors they consider. So while the subjectivity of the organizations in making these decisions is an is it's an inevitable byproduct of the situation based on their financial health these are practical hard reality challenges from the supply side but moving to the demand side now and we are seeing that individual consumers are currently dealing with the fear of unemployment and the companies are practically bleeding money and there are other purchases which are actually deemed as top priority for both these stakeholders how do you see this shift in mindset impacting the real estate sector Well, I feel that due to the pandemic, there would be a strong dip in the consumer spending. But more than that, there will be shift in priorities of people based on what they spend their money on. We can expect that most people will only look at spending on essential goods and services or at max medical expenses. And why this change? Well, because of the uncertainty of employment across various sectors, and this means a decline in spending towards buying properties. Moreover, people now even have learned about social distancing. and would not prefer to engage in recreational activities like going to the movies or eating out at restaurant perhaps even after the lockdown is lifted well there's more to this for the residential sector though the crisis will impact the sentiment of buyers who have already bought their homes recently or were in the process of buying and closing the negotiation as delivery of most of the homes get would get delayed and if in case the buyer had already applied for a home loan but could not get the possession of the property these people will actually get stuck in paying both the rent and an emi even the banks which have given the loans to such buyers might get defaulted due to the loss of people job i was recently attending a webinar featuring mr deepak pare who is the chairman of hdfc and he has a view where he expects that the prices of properties will come down and the buyers who have readily available cash flows will actually make for an excellent buying opportunities going forward which can serve as a silver lining to the sector There's also the talk that some developers may offer freebies such as deferred payment plan to the buyer investing in the mid-range segment. Now, if we move towards the retail segment, 
there is the factor that as the consumer currently have no other choice but to shop online it may permanently adjust their buying habits for certain categories through online portals therefore this will impact certain outlet even after the lockdown and the pandemic gets over even the leasing activities for that matter would slow down significantly as various retail brands are highly impacted due to the closures of malls their revenue will be hit and moreover it is highly expected that after the lockdown is over the government may still hold some restrictions on the malls or cinema hall where there is a possibility of large gathering in order to ensure social distancing protocols are followed but once things get stabilized i feel that people will eventually start moving out gradually and we might just witness high footfall in these places as well but starts little further down the line so i won't jump the gun on that so man the common consensus right now though instead of the what if is that we need an industry oriented package from the government to make sure that the things get back to normal so far there have been measures sporadic or otherwise but nothing concrete actually came to the fore until last evening when finance minister nirmala sitaraman announced her atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan package so what would you pin down other than what was mentioned as the major expectations of the real estate industry from the government or if it was something which was not covered in the finance minister speech well the government has announced certain relief measures relating to taxation corporate affairs insolvency bankruptcy court and other aspects however there are developers which are facing liquidity crunches and they are expecting more from the government to incentivize them so that they are at least stable enough to incur their fixed cost well first foremost i was expecting from the government to extend the completion timelines of the project in all state at least by a period of 6 months in which rera is applicable as due to covid 19 every developer was in risk of defaulting on rera timelines and i'm really relieved that our honorable finance minister has accepted the plea on 13th may and even treated the covid 19 as an event of force major under rera and accordingly extended registration and completion date sio moto by 6 months for all the registered projects expiring on or after 25th march 2020 without individual application moreover it was advised to issue fresh project registration certificate automatically with revised timelines these measures will surely relieve the real estate developers to some extent and ensure completion of projects now if we look at what other countries across the world have done there are some interesting examples like in australia the government has allowed accelerated depreciation deductions cash flow assistance to small enterprises and 50% wage subsidies to employers even in france companies facing a difficult situation can actually request for a tax rebate so similarly such relief should be granted in india since we know that cash flows are going to be insufficient and business will have to make choices between either paying for salaries raw material or for paying taxes well uh, deferment of tax liability for a period of 6 months is another solution as this is not the time for aggressive tax collection measures to be fair and this specially follows for those who fall in high earning and therefore high tax bracket our government had also announced deferment of emi for 3 month but this is just not enough as there is no reduction or waiver of interest of principal liability So I feel the banking system will need to allocate funds at a nominal rate of interest for the companies to discharge their liability. Also I believe the loans to real estate developers should not be classified as NPAs in case of default of any interest or principal payments and some relaxation in the norms of funding to real estate sector can also be looked at by the government. So I agree with the solutions proposed to a certain extent but I have to be the devil's advocate here. While on one side there's the angle of saving what you have at hand and focusing on what the government can or cannot do there's also the perspective of businesses needing to adapt or even more so changing or relooking at their business models and strategies be it right now or in the future if these type of challenges were to be orchestrated how do you see them panning out across the real estate sector at present there is an urgent need for investors operators and developers to reconsider all their capital decision including the ones they are currently engaged in the ones in the future As of now the focus should be on the social distancing protocols and to protect the safety and the health of all employees be it blue or the white collar or the organized or the unorganized labor well uh, from a future point of view i believe the developer should also now think of smart ways to permanently change their real estate landscapes in order to get back their occupiers and restart their offices they can think of a new design structures of their building having features like 5 meter distance in all sitting space or at corridor less dense spaces air purification and sanitization in routine even smart automation technology or digitization to avoid touch points door handles etc while deploying hands free control 
are well further in order to finish off the existing construction in project the company need to get the labor either by subsidizing them extra or by providing shelter and taking proper care of their safety and hygiene these seem to be the only viable option for now or to the current situation work from home seems to be the viable option but i am unsure as to how it will hold as a permanent mode of working so as of now for developers it makes sense for them to look out other sectors such as pharma e-commerce sectors which are supplying essential goods and want to keep their inventory ready these days players in this sectors are looking at setting up more warehousing and storage units in various cities so vacant office spaces can be used as a storage spaces temporarily and the developer can lease them out or sell them off now coming to home sales if the residential sector has to actually revive then people will need to start buying homes there is no other option and that to happen disposable income would need to be evaluated and so will the employment scenario another aspect is to at least make sure that new homes are reasonably priced which will remain an unpredictable situation to talk about So all in all I would like to sum up my comment by saying that the Indian real estate sector needs to show immense patience to overcome the current situation yes it will be tough it will change a lots of dynamic it will also bring in a lots of new technologies but it will be worth it in the long run and that's what matters and that brings us to the end of the podcast thank you so much suman for joining me on this episode i hope you had a great time just as much as i did thank you sahib And that ladies and gentlemen was this episode of the big picture stay tuned for more on our other social media channels this is sahib singh signing off mm-hmm.